This is From Hero to Zero, a show about the misconception of the demise of the music industry. We talk to heroes to make sense of the alleged zero, the music business. Hi, Olaf. How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Very good. Thank nice you. Nice to be here. Yeah, nice, uh, nice that you come to Switzerland with this huge tour. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you've been playing with uh, Enforcer now for about 10 years, good 10 years, 2005 plus Yeah, minus. more or less. Like the band as a concept started in, in 2005. Okay. And then we've been sort of as a band since six, seven sometimes. So it's, okay. Yeah. But quite uh, quite a while. Um, quite a while, yeah. Starting um, to get old. Uh, not old, but older, <laughs> older, mature. Yeah, we're not youngsters anymore. <laughs> well, um, you started basically after the internet revolution also revolutionized the music business. Yeah, sort of in the transition, exactly. I would say. Exactly. How, first of all, how did you perceive starting in that transition phase, and? Um, did it change over the last 10 years for yourself? Mm, I don't know. I think in, in that period of time, in the beginning of the 2000s, it was like people didn't really know what to do with their music. But, uh, you know, we started out like one of these MySpace phenomenon bands. You know, I put out, we put out the shit on MySpace and, you know, just a couple of, couple of weeks later, we have thousands of listenings and we were like, whoa, what the fuck's going on? And we were approached by labels and you know, sort of the first, let's say, internet revolution mm -hmm. bands within the underground metal scene. I don't know. <laughs> so cool. But uh, but yeah, yeah, it was it was both good and bad at us for us. But uh, what was the good part? I mean, the good part was that we easily we got we got quite a we got quite a small following globally, not locally. You know, so we were very quickly approached by fans from all across the planet. We never had a huge fan base anywhere, but we have a small fan base everywhere. And that's how we started. You know, we work more, we, we started to work more globally, like from, from the first moment of the band, mm -hmm. which was kind of interesting. Uh, you're from Sweden, yeah. right? So uh, you didn't start out like, you know, maybe back in the olden days, a band would start in their own city, then uh, just go a bit further. Yeah. So you basically yeah. started off already globally. Yeah, Wasn't yeah, and th that's that's one of the best part about being in this internet era, I would say, that you, you, you reach your, your, f your, what you say, core fans immediately, you know, all over the planet. It's good that we re reach people with what we do. In the end, it's like the, the band and the music, it's what's most important with uh, with, with what we want to spread, and then if people want to get further, yeah. sure. Yeah, um, I I saw in an interview that you mentioned the very first time you toured the states, which was 2009, I think, yeah. something like that. Um, you were mentioning that you toured many shows, I don't know, 20 shows or something um, in a row, but not many people came to the shows. The second time you went, you even sold out certain venues. Yeah. What happened in between? How did you reach or how were you able to motivate more people to come see you? I don't know. It's, um, but first of all, it was like between those times, we, it was like f seven years between those tours. Um, four albums between. So, but I mean, but what's most interesting, I think, is to see that the metal scene or what some people might call the scene like the traditional metal scene, I hate to put it in those words, but it has grown a lot in the US the past, the past year since the first and second time. Now you could see people, you know, see people, meet people who, who really knew what they, they are into and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Just not just the mainstream bullshit that you hear, you know. Do you think that is um, because more bands um, release better stuff maybe? Both yes and no. I mean, but overall it's just been a more awareness of, of this thing in the US. You got a few bands who's been around for some for quite some years now and been touring both Europe and the States. I don't know if people picked it up, but they certainly hadn't the first time we were there, apart from, you know, 
some 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 of the bigger cities in the U.S. But now we could see like a uh, sort of strong traditional metal following almost everywhere, and especially on on places we didn't expect it to be. Uh, do you think it's also uh, it's also beneficial to have a strong promoter? There? Yeah, I think so. Like first time we were there was basically, you know, just just uh, go over and play, you know, work with small shitty bar owners and you know people who really had no clue about what we we're doing. But now we were like professionally booked, you know, we, and and through the right channels and, and stuff like that. So it was a big difference. Mm -hmm. um, and also, um, when you went the first time, um, I don't know if you were already signed by um, Earache, or were you already signed? By first time, yeah. uh, we had a we. The situation looked like we were, we were doing a two-album deal with a small underground American label, and then it was licensed in Europe to Eric. So in in the U.S., we had nothing to do with uh, with Eric at that time. So this was something that was financed by our American label. Okay, and uh, the record was licensed in Europe. Um, second time you went, um, you were already with Nuclear Blast, yeah. which is a renowned label yeah. worldwide. Um, do you think that was also crucial to the success of that tour? I don't know. I, I mean, of course, all the labels we worked with have done a tremendous, tremendously good job for us, I must say. I'm really happy with, with all the guys we've been working with um, in terms of labels. Um, but I don't think, I, I think, I mean, the power of the labels are decreasing for every year. You know, people can get, I don't know, look at YouTube, you know, you get videos of kittens f getting billions of views overnight, you know. Things spread in a completely different way nowadays compared to, compared to 20 years ago, even 10 years ago only when, when bands were totally dependent on, on a strong, marketing strategy from the labels now things spread by itself if it's good enough and if it's you know if it's if it's something that attracts people i think so how do you bring your videos to the people just by putting them on youtube and hope for your following to yeah follow i think that's how it works now for most people youtube is the most important channel for music whatsoever nowadays so it's quite funny. When we did our first video of our first album, then we were like, yeah, we're going to try to submit this to the music uh, TV channels and stuff like this that still was a little bit around. They were dying, but they were still around. Mm -hmm. But uh, now, now we are, everything is only, only uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Talking about concept, um, you mentioned at the very beginning that the concept of um, uh, Enforcer started uh, crystallizing in 2005, 6, yeah. something like that. Um, and it's very, it, to me, it seems like an homage um, back to the days of when heavy metal grew. Was that always the plan for Enforcer or was it something that no, crystallized? It's, it's, like it's that? never been like an, a tribute or a homage thing, you know? Um, the idea started. I mean, the idea of having a band sounding like this origins from 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 when I was playing in in various death thrash, you know, bands and shit like this. And we 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 usually with almost all the bands we that I had when we were younger, we were doing covers from like you know this Venom, Exciter mm -hmm. stuff like this. And and I always found those kind of songs more fun to play than you know because it was more. It's containing more energy, mm -hmm. so this is like the actual idea comes from comes from way back, like probably the 90s, you know. Um, but it wasn't until 2005 when I decided to, you know, go all in on this project and actually create something that uh, that could bear these ideas. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Let's talk some more about the olden days. Yeah. Um, back then. CD sales were basically the metric to measure the success of a yeah. band. Nowadays, we basically don't have that anymore. Well, yeah, what? you actually you actually still have that. Okay. But it, uh, yeah, within the metal, rock and metal, you can still actually measure a band's success from record sales, and you do that a little bit actually, a little bit how the business works, how much how much how much advance you get. For, from the labels when you're recording, it's a little bit, it's straight dependent to how much record sales you do oh. or how much they count on you to sell. Oh, okay, interesting. Yeah. Um, 
However, nowadays, it, but it's not the same numbers as as it used to be. But it's uh, but it still tells a little bit. Exactly. Um, however, now we have even more metrics like downloads, yeah. um, likes on a Facebook page, yeah. maybe yeah. the reach you have as yeah. a brand. How do you, as enforcer, measure your success or define your success? Oh, it's really, really hard. I try not to think about it too much, actually, and, and try not to compare us to other bands too much. I think you can, you can still you can, you can lose the grip a little bit if you, if you start to compare yourself. I'm but uh, I, I, I don't think too much about that, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. Do you wish sometimes that ti today would be more like back in the olden days where actually it was very easy to just measure lots of records sold, and especially no illegal downloads or streams? Oh, which you, 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 I mean, th these kind of ideas are created by nostalgic people who who like creating a past that really never existed, <laughs> if you know what I mean, I and being it. nostalgic towards something. I, I think that you have to accept that you live in the times that you do and just, you know, do the best of it and use, use the advantages of your own time. Definitely. Last question, what's next for Enforcer? Um, we are... Uh, we are in the middle, sort of, of a writing process for a new album. Um, however, we um, we have this tour. It's the first show today, um, so don't miss us out in Europe if you see this. Uh, then we have two weeks at home, and then we're gonna go out on another North American tour. So it's a little bit abrupted writing sessions, but uh, we plan to have a new album out probably within a year from now, something like that. Mm -hmm depends on how, how smooth things go when we get back. That's and cool. uh, that's the idea at least. Cool, sounds very thank good you. to me. Yeah. Well, thank you. Uh, all of all the best with the thank tour, you very the much. riding yeah. and hope to see you again. I hope to cool. see you too, man. Thanks. Thanks.